Hi folks. A uh, bit of a time filler here. I'm going out for this the afternoon. Uh, I've just primed this uh, piece of uh, the cheap Fabriano watercolour. Oh, well, it's a bit there. And I, I've um, used PVA glue, not the, the pot of gesso that I have, which is the white titanium white thick. Lovely stuff. On a white background, you don't need it. I've just put some PVA glue, some slightly diluted PVA glue, with some chalk powder, uh, which is not cheap, £2.95. You can get quite a few uh, uh, goes with this one. Uh, it's quite heavy. Uh, I'll just squirt it into the into the wet. Uh, oh, hold on, I'll just move my wires. Um, the, the wet PVA glue and just work it in. But be careful that you don't miss bits, there's a little bit there. Right in the middle of it. Never mind. Um, and I, and I prime the other side with PVA glue, dilute, so that both sides are sealed. I, if you're use, using acrylic, you can paint it on both surfaces without any preparation, because uh, provided it sticks to the surface, you're okay. Uh, this is this paper is the Fabriano 130 pounds, which is probably about two thirds cellulose and about a third linen. It's a good paper for it's sort of all round paper for learning on or when you get used to it you can do some good painting on it um, but once it's once it's covered if it's covered both sides with with uh, some PVA glue it'll be permanent I don't think you need to worry about it but if if when you finish your painting uh, on the gesso side it will dry very quickly you can give it a couple of coats of the PVA glue which it dries completely clear and you get a nice uh, modest shine Prime, uh, prime the other side with PVA glue as well, so it's it's completely sealed both sides. Uh, you can uh, go straight onto it with acrylic, as you can with the ordinary watercolour, the proper 100% linen water paper. Uh, and, but if you're going to we want to paint oil on it, you can do, but I would recommend priming it first because it will because of acid might eat into the uh, into the into the cellulose contents of the of, of the of the uh, support so support meaning whatever you're painting on but of course you can paint oil and acrylic on 100% linen watercolour paper Constable and Turner have painted a number of sketches outdoor sketches on the uh, on, on, on good quality watercolour paper it was all handmade then and they're, they're as fresh today as they were when they painted, when they were painted. And I've seen them in the Victoria and Albert Museum in London several times. And I can vouch for that. Now, someone also asked me about uh, brushes, but I use, I'm using these brushes. Look at the these Guardian brushes, plus uh, these all happen to be day around me, but they're the ones. They're, apart from that one, that was quite expensive, but these ones are really, really nice quality, cheap. They're the Guardian brushes, and I use them for the oil and acrylic. Uh, MDF, now somebody asked me about hardboard. Well, I've got a documentary or a video on how I prime hardboard, but um, let me show you. But um, because I do sell some paintings down on Etsy, hardboard can be quite uh, heavy especially with a lot of paint on it and it makes it expensive to send abroad so MDF that that MDF look it's just the stuff that you back your watercolors with it's it's, it's tough as tough as old boots that is you know, it's I mean it you'll have a job to break that uh, it's very hard under the knife but about three or four cuts and you can snap it and then rub one side down with rough sandpaper this is this is light lightweight. It's much cheaper to post, and it's very convenient to use. Uh, I get mine from Wessex Frames in Leatherhead. It used to be Origin Frames. Uh, my daughter lives nearby, or in Dorking, nearby, and she buys it for me. I buy usually three or well, four sheets at a time. There's a minimum spend of fifteen pounds in the wholesalers, and I buy about four sheets at a time, three foot by four foot absolutely superb stuff to work on 
but I wouldn't work on it probably more than say 24 by 18 that would be maximum anything bigger than that would be too bouncy but uh, I mostly paint 10, 10 inches by 8 inches 14 by 11 16 by 12 15 by 11 th that size because I've got to demonstrate I don't want to demonstrate on a vacuum grade board and also if I I couldn't I can't do watercolors with this uh, showing you how I mix because I hold the palette but at the moment no, it is me watercolor. Water. I would I would recommend one of these highly. I was using it for watercolors, but then I've I, I needed it for acrylics on on the membrane on some wet towel, keep it wet. Uh, so I put the watercolors in the Ziploc bag, which I'll show you. It's going to take longer explaining all this than the, probably the painting I'm going to. Well, this me Ziploc bag. Look, that's got a bit of toweling in. It's soaked with water with a spray, a hand spray. So that it goes in my drawer instead of in the stable palette. But at the moment I've got my oil paints in there without any membrane at all. I've just put the grease, piece of greaseproof paper, this, in the box and it will stay moist for two or three days. Here, well, I, I'll throw this away when I finish. Or oh, I'm so mean. I just, the paint had dried overnight and I just scraped it off and I'm reusing it. Uh, so there we are. So any questions, I'll ask away, but uh, MDF for me. If I had a, a great large space and a, a gallery, gallery that was regularly selling my work, um, maybe I'll paint it on canvas, but I'm not a lover of canvas. I, I quite, I'm quite happy painting on these surfaces. They're durable, they're cheap, they're lightweight. And they do me. And since I'm only really demonstrating, or trying to demonstrate, so I want I, I want a, a sort of a wandle scene um, acrylic. I've got my vet gel. Now it's blue, but it doesn't stay blue. Once you mix it, the, the blue just vanishes. It's like the Ricketts blue that your mum used to add to the washing after, after well, in the 50s and 60s. The blue made the whites look whiter for some reason, some miraculous reason. Not that I ever did the washing. Right, okay, so I'm going to put in a bit of rough. Uh, let's, I'll use my, my, old, my old brushes to do that. My, my cheap worn out Chinese brushes, as well as those ones. A bit, a bit, of, a bit of vet gel. Agri-Vet gel, it's the stuff that vets use for inserting their arms on the great long latex gloves into farm animals and that sort of thing. Uh, so I'm going to use a bit of, bit of red, a bit of yellow. Oh, what's my favourite? Black, a bit of black. I've got to have a bit of black. Uh, put it back up here. Unfortunately, Wilco's have stopped doing their acrylics. So let's just, just put in some abstracty sort of landscape. Just, just quick. I don't want to labour this. I want to do it as quick as I can. Uh, oh, we can have a bit of a hill, a bit of a meadow, a bit of blue. See, whatever you do, you, you, you're going to change. So don't worry about getting everything perfect to start with. Just put a paint on. It will dry quick enough. That's a big, big tree and some bushes. Three or four years ago, I, we haven't got a smart TV. We've got, uh, they're, they're flat screens, but they're the original ones. Not, not with a great cathode ray tube stuck in the back, the slim line. But it doesn't have the eye players and that sort of thing. And I, I bought a Now TV box. Uh, but I haven't used it because I've, I've, we've got hard drive recorders. Well, one of them's packed up. And we've got a, an Amazon Fire stick, or yeah, Amazon Fire, 
for all the iPlayers and Netflix and that sort of stuff. Um, I thought I'd, I'd link up the uh, the Now TV, redundant Now TV box from another television into our little kitchen flat screen, which isn't smart either. Very years, but it's a good, great little television. It's, I put it outside in the garden when I'm watching tennis or cricket or something like that. Um, I'm going to put some landscape in now. So a bit of vet gel, a bit of white, a bit of ochre. Let's have a bit of that in here. And I, I rigged it up in, in the kitchen and because it works straight away with the iPads, so we can watch other things while we're having our dinner. Just mix some old colours up. I, I want this abstract, but I want a handle on reality. I don't want it completely abstract expressionism. I just want to get some paint on here. There's plenty, plenty of gel. Right, let's get some light on there. Now, while that's drying off a bit, see the vet gel holds it open for quite a time. Okay, you English football supporters, season kicks off the Premier League on Saturday. I'm going to see Crystal Palace v Everton, my team's Crystal Palace. But I've got a couple of Evertonian mates. One is Evertonian from Liverpool and the other one is uh, <laughs> from my area in South London. But he supports Everton. And I'm lucky, my, my, my son couldn't get three tickets, one for him, grandson and, and me. But one of his colleagues at work is a season ticket palace holder and can't make Saturday, so I've got his, I've got his uh, ticket. How lucky am I? Uh, hey, right, okay, so Stephen Cronin, if you're looking in. I wish your, your team all the best as they're back in the Premier League. Aston Villa, Steve supports. So we sometimes have a little conversation on emails. We certainly will when Palace play Everton. That'll be a... Okay, let's just, just bring that up into that. Then we'll, we'll put in a bit of a sky. So, now, dead easy so far. Don't mix your... If you're mixing, like I did, three colours there, the, the red, the yellow and the black, don't knock the life out of all the separate colours. Leave them separate, well mixed, but a bit separate on the brush so that they go on as more or less as three colours. It makes for good impressionist type painting. Right, okay, now we want a bit of a sky. So we don't want a dramatic sky. We don't want a sky, so plenty of white, a bit of blue. Now, there aren't many hairs left in this brush. You can, you can work away with water instead of the vet gel, but it was dry very quick. It's quite dry, well, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely day today, but we are expecting a lot of rain going to hit tomorrow, coming in from the southwest. Mm. We get plenty of colour in this sky. in the hole. See this is quite quite rough the paper. You probably can see the brush strokes coming coming through now. Let's get some of some of that darker blue in there. If you mix your blue, light blue heavier blue it'll give a bit more interest in the, in your sky. 
but you have to decide what you want as dominant, whether you want the sky to predominate, and I love skies, as you know. I've done a lot of them. A couple of painters, or well, several painters I'd like to recommend to you. There's Lewis, Lois Davidson, Davidson, Davidson. Some of you follow her now, she's, she's on Facebook, on, in the British Impressionists. Now, what I'm trying to avoid doing it is, is to paint the same shape as the tree. Lois Davidson, she comes from the south coast, from Hove. She, 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 was a, she subscribed to my Patreon channel for some months until she could walk. And she's producing some lovely paintings. There's my mate Joe Menzer from number somewhere in Chicago. He's, they've both got YouTube channels. I would recommend him. He's he's made terrific progress over the past year. So there's him. There's my mate Johnny Johnny Morgan from uh, Swansea, Wales. He's got his own YouTube channel. He's a he does some stuff diff different, and there's, of course, there's uh, the smoothie, John. Mm. Show you how to, to square off and transfer drawings from a photograph to a support. Right, now, now that's sort of, that's touched, almost touched dry now. You see how, how long that vet gel holds it open? So, and it's cheap, that's, that's the reason we're using it. Oh, let's have a bit, of, a bit of this and that. So I just feel my way into uh, this. Just work away until you start to get somewhere. I don't think you can hear that young young girl. About six, five, six. She got a lovely, loud voice. That. Um, very similar to there's a lovely YouTube clip of of a nativity with one little girl didn't know the words she's about four and, and she was singing above everybody else and she was just hilarious it's gone it went viral not surprised let me just go over the edges there this is just a basic bit of a landscape here. You can reinstate your your trees later. A bit of yellow in it. Yellow, not green. Yeah, I've gone over that cloud, I didn't really like it. I was just, as I say, just feel your way in. I just want to cover some of that, uh, some of that there now. Bit of a bokery red. Right, let's go back with a bit of blue now. You hear her? She's got a voice like a foghorn, but it's so endearing. I love being out of when she's uh, kicking off.
Right, now we're getting some of the sky with the sky. Uh, it's a bit of, bit of yellow, a bit of red. A bit of burst shadow in there. See how rough that surface is now? Look, I'm dragging over that, but it's only just hitting the high spots, which is great. So I can go over that. A bit of bit on the foreground now. Are you with me? Okay, so I want a green, so I'll mix, so let's mix a blue and a, and a yellow and a bit of medium. That's nice, sort of grey green there. It's bad in white. If you're sort of a, a beginner, then this sort of thing is very useful for you. Right, let's get a nice light. Oh, I've got so much black in there. Right, I'm going to go back to that uh, red. A bit of blue in there. Let's get that dark back in there. Good bit of grey in there. Now, when that dries off, I can add a bit, bit of a highlight, some brush. Okay, 
So it's a little bit of orange, I think. So it's warming up a little bit. Sort of awesome colour. Oh, well, that's right, I'll just scumble over some light cloud again. Or the, yeah, the light stuff's just shining through. Just opening it up a little bit. Now, I want to get in with some nice lights now. Right, now we want a bit of bit of shadow colour in uh, the foreground. Got to get rid of that line there. I don't like that. Uh, so, red, blue, simple palette colour. Things are drying off quite fast now, so this is as dark as I want in the foreground. Red. I'm just making the colours up. I'm, I want it colourful. So I'm not. Right, let's just drag over that now. Just break up some of that there, that, that bit there, that edge. Put a bit of blue there just to give a bit of this and well, a bit of blue grey. Right now, and as promised, I think we can take a little bit of, bit of poppies and stuff in there. So just a nice uh, sky colour. I'm just just dragging over all of this. 
just just shapes, meadow shapes, and we'll add some. Uh, uh, let's have some dark darker green. So a bit of that. Ah, it's too strong. Isn't it? Couldn't do that with oil. Because the stuff underneath is quite dry, so let's go back to the, the yellowy colour. A bit more red in there, I think. So we can make it look a bit warmer. I'll substitute it with yellowy, reddies, oranges for for greens. Now some yellow ochre with some white. Just dragging the edge of the brush, I've got lots of the bristles are sort of all split up, so that they're giving individual strokes. I've put some burnt umber out there, but just in case, just for contingency. Tears, that's T A R E S. Okay, that's uh. some colour in there now. Reds. Right, let's see if I mix a bit of white with that. With that red, a bit of a pinky colour, we can put in some distant sort of reds, and we'll add a bit of a bit of white and a bit of yellow. Okay, well, um, I need to just strengthen there a little bit, so let's just get a bit of that uh, sky colour. I'm going to put it in a mount, so I'm going to waste all that paint because I'm not going to do any more painting today. I've got nowhere, nowhere to put it. I do have another statement paint, but anyway, let's just pull that off. Ah, well, I think maybe I should get a bit of that colour on there. Well, while we're at it, so, whoops. Oh, that'll do. Right, no more. You can fiddle and poke and prod a painting to, to death. As we all know. Right, let's put a, put a mount on there. We'll have a look at it. I'll move the board over. I 
I'll just get those clips and just put them on here. Ooh. Okay, let's move this, this over a bit. And I'll just lift up. Ah, oh, there we go. So well, there we have uh, a, a pretty little meadow. You can put some figures on there if you wish. But we've got a nice, nice sky, loads of colour in it, bags of colour in the foreground. And just this distance, slightly distant, misty effects on the uh, on the trees. I love doing these, as you know. We'll look a bit of a picture on there. Uh, so I have a go. If you're a beginner, it's easier than you think, but sometimes it's harder than you ever anticipated. Because <laughs> you get you can get boxed in and and and, tr and struggle too much over a, one particular bit of the painting. But what my advice would be was just to stop struggling with it and move somewhere else on the painting. And then just do it go elsewhere and then come back to it later and you, you'll find a solution. It's the way I paint. If it starts, starts to get bogged down in a particular bit, go somewhere else. And with acrylic you can do that very quickly because of the drying time of the acrylic. Right, I've a lot of information there. Thanks for looking in. I uh, hope you have a lovely rest of the day and uh, I hope to see you it's Friday tomorrow isn't it I've got to cut the grass first if it's not raining and then maybe some painting bye bye